So hey guys, we thought we'd check in with you. It's been a minute, right? Yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, busy, busy, busy. You know, I recently got a question. I've been actually posing this question on social. I'm on Instagram at Weather Anchor Mama, or you can look me up, Stacy and Gooden, on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, and we want your questions. We basically nothing is off limits. I don't know if I say nothing is off limits, but within you know, reason. within reason, yeah. So we've been taking questions, and so we're going to take the time to answer them. So if you have any questions for us, please let us know. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click the notification bell. So we're going to get started. The question that I was recently asked on my social media was, um, what's it like these days raising biracial kids? Do you want to start? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll start. How is um, it different? How is it different? I mean, I never raised non-biracial kids, so I can't really say. But I could say that being white and living in the, the world as a white man, it's, it's definitely uh, going to be different for our children growing up, growing up biracial. So how is it different? Um, I think we're starting to see, <laughs> I think... You know, what's interesting is that when children are small, they're, they're kind of in a bubble and they're yeah. like, you know, they're not really, they, you know, children don't really realize racism and things like that. And yet, you know, it's like they say in the message, uh, the child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. They don't know. Right. But then as they get out in the world and they start to experience things, we have to teach them about racism things they may encounter as they get older. Right. And, you know, we're still at a point where they're, they're pretty young, but they are starting to see it in some ways. You know, even our eight-year-old is like, that person's yeah. racist. Like, so, and we have these discussions with them and, and you know, have to, we have to let them know that, look, you're gonna, you, there's gonna be situations where you're gonna be discriminated against just because of how you look. Yeah. It's sad, but, we have to have those conversations. So, I mean, right now they're, they're still at a young age, so they're not, and, and to a degree, they're kind of still in, the, in a little bit of a bubble. Yeah. They go to school, they do activities and such, but we're not really big on like play dates and sending them out on their own. We're pretty protective from that standpoint. So they, we haven't reached that point where they're out socializing on their own, where, you know, things like that. Yeah, so I it, mean, that's a little different, but go ahead. Because the the world has changed as we know you know it's 2022 you can kind of do the math on where we are our kids are 8 and 11 so a lot has gone on in the last couple of years and a lot has gone on for centuries i mean let's face it but these times have been very sensitive uh when they were babies and we did you know daycare we would drop them off i mean as a mom i could sense just looking at them that they knew difference in terms of pigment skin tone they knew that but again it wasn't like really talked about as they got older they started to become more cognizant of the fact that people would stare they want to know okay am i the nanny am i not the nanny that was at the beginning now it's like there's an understanding we don't get that so much now but there have been instances that come up that we find to be either racially insensitive, inappropriate, whatever you want to call it, but it's what we try to do is have the conversation. For me, no topic is off limits. It's just about being age appropriate. That's my take. I know we, we have different takes on it because he's more protective and he's more like, well, they're too young. We don't need to talk to them about certain things, but we do talk about race. We mm -hmm. see eye to eye on that. Yep. Um, the way we channel that conversation is key. We try to make it more age appropriate. Most recently, our son had an issue with his hair in school. They wanted him to cut his hair. We were like, no, not going to happen. You know, we trim as needed, but the way he wears his hair is how he wants to wear his hair. And, you know, we had those conversations with um, faculty members stating that, he should be allowed just like these days we choose whatever pronouns we want to we want to be referred to as it's the same way in how we dress how we wear our hair it's our self-expression and for him his hair is 
a part of a huge part of who he is. He's an artist and he's very particular. So instead of stifling that and make him um, just acclimate or assimilate uh, into what society deems as appropriate, we have the conversations. We explain why this is happening. We explain you know, to him, you know, what you're going to get things like this will come up and you're, you're going to get it from all sides. And it's important that you know who you are, that your hair is beautiful. You are beautiful. Um, you are both black and white, but society will view you as black. We have those conversations. I think it's important. So when people ask what's it like raising biracial children, yeah, it's like raising any child, but there is that extra little, there's an element of element. They, they 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 might get hate or they will get hate from both sides. There'll be yeah. black people that will hate because they're not black enough. There'll be white people that will hate because they're not white. You yeah. know, like so they, that's a fact yeah. and that's life and that's you know unfortunately it's still to this day that's that's how it is and I, you know I yeah, wish I, I wish I could say that that was gonna I felt positive that was gonna change mm -hmm. but but I don't see that happening by the time they're grown up so they have to be aware of this they have to know they, they can't live in a, in a bubble and live in a clouds and think everything is rosy you know there are people out there that unfortunately just are not going to like them just because of the way they look and um, you know we have to prepare them for that yeah one of a friend of mine as a matter of fact who happened to be you know black and you know she also has a, a child who's black and she's like well you know you don't have to worry about you know racism because you know your kids are light and I was like, really? Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't think it we're already that seeing it. We're already seeing it. Our son got into a little, you know, altercation at school. And you know, it was pretty evident to us, you know, how, what went down. And, you know, again, we had that conversation and we said, you know what? Uh, the unfortunate thing is that although you are absolutely right and you did nothing wrong, these are the kind of examples that we often talk about. Um, being in a situation and somebody may discriminate against you and look at you as the aggressor. So for me, I feel it's very important as they get older, as they go out into the world more, as they go on more play dates and hang out with their friends. Yeah, I told my son the other day, our son, sorry. <laughs> I told him the other day, I said, look, don't ever be in a room alone with anybody make sure there's always a group of you make sure that there are witnesses um because guess what if something goes missing who do you think they're looking at yeah. i mean that's the reality we live in so i think it's important not to raise them in fear but just to prepare them so they're not like living in this fantasy world of rose colored glasses. Yeah, the world is beautiful. People are beautiful. You'll meet wonderful people, have wonderful experiences. But the reality is society can, it can be tough. Um, just looking at their teachers, they don't have any black teachers. So in terms of representation, that's not there. So more so than anything, uh, we feel it's important to have those conversations and to make sure that they have a strong sense of identity and that's what you know i've always blogged about that's why i started my blog that's why you know we started these videos to make sure that they have something to look back on and say you know what um you know mommy daddy they they wanted to do right by us you know yeah and we and we don't want them to think like everybody's racist and don't no, trust anybody we, you know we want we just want them to understand like most people are good people yeah. but there is a segment that of the population that is not and you have to be aware of that yeah. and prepared that their situations ultimately will come up they're very young as they get older they they're definitely going to encounter situations yeah. that are uncomfortable and you know they just need to be prepared for that but we don't want to make them think everybody's bad yeah but just make them you know prepare them and have those talks and and teach Make them sure about their ready. history, teach yeah. them about their culture, and not just wait for Black History Month to talk mm. about black folks. It's, it's about just keeping that conversation going and having an open dialogue and teach them how to identify these microaggressions and to, you know, if you feel uncomfortable, if someone says something inappropriate, you feel uncomfortable, don't ignore it. 
bring it to an adult uh, if you're in school or if you're somewhere um, that's outside of the home. Uh, when you come home, make sure you discuss it with us so we know what's going on. So, so for us, in a nutshell, how we raise our biracial kids is keeping the dialogue open and mm -hmm. encouraging them to express however it is they feel no matter what no judgment zone in our house and we keep it age appropriate we try to be very careful and we look out for those signs you know if they're feeling uncomfortable if they have any questions we notice something's off we address it and we've had those experiences trust mm -hmm. and um you know we we've managed to to um you know just get through it and ultimately love themselves for what they are. They're beautiful. They're, yeah. they're white. They're black. They're, they're, you know, they're great kids. Be confident with themselves and to, to know how to choose the right friends. That's a big yeah. thing growing up is choosing the right friends. So we try to, that's a big yeah. topic also is like, if somebody's negative, you need to realize you need to right. get out of there. So... All right, guys. Well, we're going to keep this one a little short, but we encourage you, if you have any questions or comments, keep it respectful. I ask that you just do that. And, um, you know, I, I'm on, you don't want to see, he doesn't say this Instagram. <laughs> I don't I'm post Insta Instagram. He doesn't even post. Might as well just be a ghost account. I'm on Instagram at whether Anchor Mama or Stacey Anagood, and I'm also on Facebook. So, be sure to hit us up there and um, leave comments. And if you have any other questions, you can also leave them in the comments below and we'll get to them. So thanks so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Any last uh, No, thank you. Bye.